daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Be seated. Thank you, Lonnie. As you know, today is uh, September 11th, and 21 years ago, uh, almost 3,000 people died in a multi-pronged terrorist attack on our nation. We still remember as a people, as a, as a country, as a nation, and we still grieve the, the loss and the pain of that day. This last week, a, a few of you have expressed some concerns that we're planning a, a kickoff on, on 9-11, and I, I do want to thank you for those who expressed that, and thank you for your sensitivity to this day and for helping us to think through things better. Perhaps we might do diff something differently next time, but there, there were several factors and constraints that originally did cause us to choose this day for our kickoff. We also thought we could balance both a, a respect for the day along with a celebration of, of life and hope that we have in Jesus. And though we grieve for the immense suffering and loss of life, we also celebrate those who have persevered through it and those who rush to help. And most importantly, we, we celebrate that we have a God who is with us even in the tragedies and who has overcome death in Jesus Christ. This is the good news that we want to share with the whole community around us. And this is the, the message and the ministry that we are celebrating and kicking off today. Let us pause to remember and to, to pray together. Would you bow your head? Oh God, our hope and refuge In our distress, we come quickly to you. Shock and horror of that tragic September 11th day have subsided, replaced now with a, a long-term sorrow, an unshakable emptiness, a longing for an innocence lost. We come now as a congregation, remembering those who lost their lives in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. We are mindful of the sacrifice of public servants who demonstrated, demonstrated the greatest love of all by laying down their lives for friends. We commit their souls to your eternal care and celebrate their gifts to a fallen humanity. We come remembering and we come in hope, not in ourselves, but in you, O oh God. As foundations that we once thought secure have been shaken, we are reminded of the illusion of security. In commemorating this tragedy, we give you thanks for your presence in our time of need, and we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth our guide, and our guardian. Amen. Let us just pause for a moment of silence, and we've lit the Christ candle today as a reminder of our hope in Christ. Amen.
Thank you, choir. And it is great to have our choir back for the fall. Welcome back, choir. And you all are sounding beautiful this morning. Well, welcome to you all as well on this uh, kickoff Sunday of ours. Welcome to Glen L. United Methodist Church. My name is David Deans, the pastor here at, at our church. Our focus here, whether we are in person or I know some of you are online, is to love God and our neighbor and to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Whether today's your first visit or you've been with us for a long time, we're glad you're here today with us uh, to, uh, to worship God and to glorify his name this morning. A couple of announcements. Uh, if you're online with us this morning, thank you for being with us. Our online host uh, today is Wendy, and uh, she'll be there to uh, help you uh, throughout the service. If you have prayer concerns, uh, feel free to say hi to her in the chat. And if you have any other comments or needs, uh, Wendy's there, and uh, the chat is there for, for you all to use and to participate as, in worship today. Number two, we have launched our nominations process for this year. Uh, an email was sent out just last week with a link to our interest form. If you're interested in becoming a part of the leadership of our church or, or joining a ministry team, let us know by completing that form. Feel free to also forward that email to others that you think might be a good fit for our church. And as part of our nomination process this year, we've invited uh, the leadership and the ministry committees to make videos that we'll be showing you, that we'll be showing you over the next couple weeks. And these videos will just highlight uh, the people on the committees and some of the work that they do. Uh, so stay tuned. We've got a lot of uh, Hollywood stars, I think, in the making. Uh, so you'll have to watch and judge for yourself. Uh, and we'll have uh, our first one will be just a little bit later today uh, about our church council. Uh, the choirs of Glen Al UMC are starting back up. As you saw today, we have our chancel choir. Uh, but we also are hoping to get our youth and our children's choirs going again. So you don't need to be a trained uh, singer to participate in any of our choirs. Just someone who likes having fun and, and worshiping God through music. If you're interested in any of our choirs, uh, you can reach out to Doug uh, Burian, our music director, uh, or check out our newsletter for more information there as well. Well, as you can see, it is raining today. We were hoping the weather was going to be beautiful, and we were hoping that we were going to be outside after worship for picnic and games, uh, but alas, it is, it is raining. Uh, but we're still going to celebrate because we've got a God, uh, uh, whether it's raining or snowing or sleeting uh, or sunny, uh, God is the same God today, yesterday, and tomorrow. So we're going to celebrate God and what God's doing through our church uh, this fall and the launch of uh, new ministries. And so what we'll do is after worship, we will be in the fellowship hall uh, where we will have lunch. And then I think we're going to manage a, a, maybe a few game somehow uh, in, in, in the building somehow. We'll, we'll see. That's up to our talented Denise Martin uh, to figure out. I'm sure she's figured out a few things, so be ready. And you can find out more about uh, these announcements and others by checking out our website or our newsletter uh, or calling the church office. Well, as we shift now and prepare for our time of offering, I want to remind you Again, that your giving makes an impact. All of these things we're talking about, these ministries and events and opportunities, they are supported uh, by you all and your generous uh, giving. And as we give, uh, it is an act of worship. It is an act of, of worship to God, and, and we give back to God what God has already given to us. Several ways you can give. You can give through our, our website. There's the, uh, the, the URL right there on the screen. Uh, you can give if you're online, you're on the church online platform. I believe there is a give tab. And of course, uh, in person today, our ushers will be coming around with the offering plates uh, in just a moment. They're going to be coming around while uh, our video is playing. So you'll be watching the video and, and, as, and the ushers will be coming around uh, for the offering at that point. Uh, and of course, you can always send your checks in the mail or drop them off at the, in the secure mailbox out front. So will you please join me and my family in giving generously today. Dear friends, hello, I'm Craig Lee, chairperson of the church council. You may ask, what is the church council? What is its function within Glen LUMC? 
In the United States, the UMC is divided into 54 annual conferences, each presided over by a bishop. Our annual conference is the Baltimore Washington Conference led by Bishop Luttrell Easterling. It covers the areas shown in the map on this sheet. The Baltimore Washington Conference is further subdivided into eight districts, each of which is led by a superintendent. For Glen L UMC, we are in the central district highlighted by the yellow arrow and are led by superintendent, Reverend Dawn Hand, who has just completed her first year in that position. Our district includes 73 churches and approximately 20,000 members. The local church is ultimately led by the Holy Spirit and a shared vision with our annual conference. Each local church takes part in an annual charge conference presided over by the district superintendent, where we report on the health and mission of our church and affirm our leaders for the following year. Our council is led by the council chair, myself currently, with support from the pastor, lay leader, lay delegate, youth representative, and two teams, an administrative team and a ministry team with the corresponding committees for each team as shown. You'll be learning more about each of these committees in subsequent video presentations. So what does the council do? The bullet statements on this chart are directly from our Book of Discipline, the guiding document of the UMC. We have two primary functions, developing the vision for our church and carrying on the administration of the church. By prayer and conferencing and knowing the collective gifts, talents, and passions of our congregation, we can develop the vision and mission of our church. Similarly, we must take care of the administrative functions of the church and all committees play a vital role in that. We meet every other month and on special occasions when the need arises to be able to share our needs, our joys, and our concerns. I would now like to introduce you to the 16 of our 20 member council who were present at our July meeting. Well, I'm Craig Lee, chairperson of the church council. Hi, I'm Sandy Spies. I'm chairman of the Cares and Concerns Committee. Hi, I'm Laura Meyer. I'm chairman of the Fellowship Committee. Hi, I'm Lisa Dolce. I'm the lay leader and the chair of outreach. Hi, I'm Jan Lee, and I am chairperson for the school. Hi, I'm Kathy Hoshko, and I'm representing the United Methodist Women. Hi, I'm Jean Riley, and I am chairman of our church worship committee. Hi, I'm Bruce Benner. I'm the financial secretary. I'm David Deans, the, the pastor of uh, the church. Hello, I'm Beth Bushling, and I'm the chairperson of the staff parish relations committee. Hi, I'm Kim Sullivan. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. Hey, I am Chuck Vimey. I'm a member at large. Hi, I'm Reverend Lynn Knowlton, and I'm the Secretary of the Church Council. I treasure each of those people you just saw, and they made my job at Gumsey a joy. I hope you have learned a little more about what the Church Council is and what it does. It is pretty rare for someone's first position at the church to be in a leadership position. We all grew into that role. I myself started as a member of the finance committee, then became the finance chair, then the outreach chair, then the lay leader, and finally in my current position as council chair. Each of those steps has prepared me for the next as I grew in knowledge, skill, and faith. For those of you watching this that have not served on a church committee, I hope you will prayerfully consider doing so. The needs are many and the workers are few. New blood brings new ideas and helps us to evolve our vision and mission. Where will we be heading in five years, 10 years, 20 years? By taking an active role in the life of our church, you can help to shape that and make some lifelong friends along the way. Enjoy your journey. 
Well, thank you, Craig Lee. I'm going to invite Craig up real quick just so you can see him in person. Craig uh, is a gift to our church. Uh, his leadership and his commitment uh, to our church, our congregation, and to our church council. Uh, and so thank you, uh, Craig, for all that you do. And I'll turn it over to you for a second to have others stand. Uh, well, I don't oh, think we'll give Hollywood any run for its money. Uh, but uh, so we're, we're definitely not professional actors, but what, what we are is a group of people on the church council that love Jesus and his church, love this congregation, our church family, and most importantly, love the bigger community that surrounds us. And uh, I'm proud for all the, what this church has done in all those regards, and I'm, I, I love being here, and I hope that you all do also. Um, I would like to recognize our, our members, I think, it's a little late today, and I think some are probably out back preparing for the festival, but all of those of you that are on the church council who all are wearing name tags today, so after the service, when you're out in, uh, in the fellowship hall, uh, I ask you to thank them for their service as leaders in this church, and if you're interested in any of the committees that they're on, talk to them about it, and maybe, maybe you'll find a spot for yourself on it. Will all of our council members please stand? Thank you all for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to invite all of you to stand now. We're going to continue as we uh, give to God our offerings, and the ministry of our church is also an offering to God. So let us sing our doxology together. Eternal source of refuge and trust, our days are filled with your abiding presence. We awaken at the dawn of new life. We labor with assurance that you bless the work of our hands. We sleep at peace in the promise of your protection and care. All that we are and all that we do are signs of your saving grace. Accepting now the gifts we bring you as tokens of our unending devotion. Multiply them and use them for your glory. Amen. I'm just going to hear it. I invite you to have a seat, and I am going to give a little instruction. So I wish that there were so many kids we were going to trip over you, but you know what? The ones that are here, we will love it. I'm going to invite our kids to come up and sit on the floor over here, and I'm going to invite our preschool teachers who are joining us today and the preschool board members to come stand on this side over here and uh, any of our ministry leaders, our children's or youth ministry leaders, Miss Donna out there, um, Miss Letitia, um, Bradley, Lisa, I'm not sure, you know who you are. If you're helping with the kids or the ministry, come stand over here. Wonderful, wonderful. And please come you can cross over the middle. And my kids, I'm going to invite you to come sit right here. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. My kids, come sit right here. Yeah, because I'm going to need you in a minute. Beautiful. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Here we are. I'm going to come stand up here with Reverend David for just a second. So, my beautiful kids, listen to me for just a second. It is a new ministry here. What does that even mean? Let me tell you. It means we continue with all the great ministries we've been doing, but hopefully now we'll get to see some more of our friends. For those of you who are online today, we sure are missing you. 
but I hope that it means that some of our friends will come back and every Sunday that not only will it be you sitting in those Sunday school classrooms, but you will have some friends and we will start to get back to what is normal. Hmm, I don't know what that is, but our new normal, right? So where it's been seeing a lot, you've been seeing a lot of Miss Donna and myself and Miss Letitia and Mr. Brian. I hope that we're ready now to see some of our other youth and um, children's leaders as well. And we have Miss Julie in the house, and we have Amelia and Bradley and Miss Lisa. They, they serve on our youth side for when our kids get a little bigger. And I love doing ministry with you. We are so blessed to have two of our youth who help, who help so much, not only on the council, but also to, to, to shape our youth ministry. And then this church is so blessed I don't know if you all know this, but some of you actually go to the preschool. Many of our kids have gone to our preschool. We are blessed with a preschool here at Glenelg um, that is, I would say, at full capacity all the time. And even during COVID, under Miss Kim's leadership, we, you, did not miss a beat, right? We didn't get to see all of their faces, but they made it through. And so here we are with a new year. And so my kids, you are loved not only by our church people, but by our preschool staff and our board members as well. And so what this means for you and the other kids who aren't here today in our community, that there is so much love glowing from Glenelg United Methodist Church that this community is blessed. And so we will pray over all of you and all of you today that we continue here in the center of this community to shine God's light as bright as we can, not only to you, but so that you then can go and share it in your world, at school and in your homes and with your friends. And so I'm just going to take one minute and walk around really quick. And if you could just tell me your name and what you do at the preschool, that would be really great. I'm Emily Herzey, and I'm the administrative assistant in the office. Excuse me to stand in front of you. <laughs> Maureen Simpson, a threes teacher. Cindy Kuhn, a fours teacher. Kim Wisman, director. <laughs> Jan Lee, and preschool board chair. Gail Pfeiffer, vice chair of the preschool board. Laura Meyer, treasurer. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for being here today and to represent our many others at the preschool as well. So, kids, will you do me a favor? Because you know what? It takes all of us to pray together, right? And my kids out there, if you will just raise up a hand. And in the choir, we know you all have power, special powers, right? Raise up that hand. We will just pour over you all and let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for filling us with your spirit today. May we all know your presence among us, within us, beside us, before us, and behind us. Lord, we ask your protection over our preschool, over all of our teachers and board members and administrative side. Lord, lift them up this, this year. Let them be strengthened by you. Keep them refreshed and renewed. Uh, may the children know just how loved they are by each of these individuals. Lord, we pray for each of our families that are a part of this, this wonderful school. Lord, um, just be with them. Help the children to learn and to grow and, and love with one another. And Lord, for them to, to get to know you better. We know that our families, Lord, they are the first line of, of sharing you. But Lord, our preschool teachers have a wonderful gift. And so Lord, help them to shine your light to these children and to their families. Just uh, guide them, Lord, and be with them. And Lord, for the ministries of our church, for our, for our children's ministry and for our youth ministry, Lord, I just thank you for all of these servants here that just pour into our kids and love them so much. Lord, be with our ministries this year as we kick off a new season. Help us, Lord, to remember to reignite our, our flame in you, to just uh, share you in our world and our community, and, Lord, to just be filled by your spirit. We pray all of these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, preschool teachers and board. Thank you, youth and, and kids ministry leaders. We appreciate it. And thank you, kids. And children, if you'd like to go to kids' time, you're welcome to do that with Miss Denise.
Well, as everyone's uh, walking back, we are continuing in our sermon series this month, the month of September, about uh, daring to trust. It's called High Wire, Daring to Trust. You know, life, as you probably know, can sometimes feel like a high wire act, right? Scary and unnerving at every step. We sometimes don't know what step to take, which way to turn, who, who to trust on that high wire of life. People and circumstances aren't always dependable. But God is trustworthy. That's what this series is about, that we can trust God. We can count on God no matter what. We have a memory verse this month. I wonder how you're doing on that. It's Proverbs 3, 5. Anybody remember that verse or already know that verse by heart? Uh, We're going to try to say it together. If you know it, say it with me. Starts with trust, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There we go. Do not depend on your own understanding. One more time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Last week we read about how Abraham learned to, to trust God even when things were looking bleak. And God eventually did take care of Abraham and Sarah, and he fulfilled uh, God's promise. God fulfilled God's promise to Abraham and Sarah and gave them a son, right? They, they, all this time, they hadn't been able to have a son. They weren't able to uh, pass down their legacy. Abraham and Sarah were worried about um, their future, and, and would God fulfill his promise? And God did fulfill his promise. It was in their old age, but God fulfilled it, and, they, and he gave them a son named Isaac. Today we're picking up with Isaac's story, and it's going to be in Genesis 26. If you have a Bible or a Bible app, you can start opening up to that, Genesis 26. Now Abraham has died, Isaac's father, Abraham has died, and and now Isaac is in charge. And Isaac's having to make a go at leading the household, right? Uh, Abraham, God had blessed Abraham and Sarah. The household had continued to grow uh, with uh, the, the herds and the servants and, and family. And so the household had grown, and now it's Isaac's turn to lead everyone. And so he's got to give it a go on his, on his own. Now severe famine breaks out, and God leads Isaac to the, to the region of Gerar, the land of the Philistines. And while others are struggling during this famine, God is blessing and protecting Isaac, just like he did Abraham. As you can imagine, uh, trouble begins to stir, right? Everybody is watching and looking at at, uh, the blessing that Isaac's uh, enjoying while they're struggling. So trouble begins, and, and Isaac must now learn how to trust God himself. So as Lonnie comes up to to read, go ahead and get out your Bibles if you haven't yet and open to Genesis chapter 26. We're going to look specifically at verses 12 through 25. So Genesis 26 verses 12 through 25. And as Lonnie reads, I want you to listen for what this passage teaches us about how we can dare to trust God. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man, and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants, that the Philistines became jealous of him. So the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father Abraham. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley, where he set up their tents and settled down. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. Isaac's servants also dug in the Gerar Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But when the... But then the shepherds from Gerar came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said, and they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Esek, which means argument. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again there was a dispute over it. 
so Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time, there was no dispute over it, so Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. And for he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place and his servants dug another well. Thank you, Lonnie. You know, on Thursday, I was, I was reading this passage as part of our staff prayer time, and Denise, Denise Martin uh, was a part of that, as usual. And at the end uh, of the passage, after Denise had, had heard the passage, she, she kind of blurted out, dirt in your well. How do you like that? And I kind of laughed, you know, it was kind of funny. It kind of sounded like, you know, dirt in your eye, that old expression. Uh, you know, and... But as I started thinking about what she said, what a, what a great word picture for us about what was going on in this passage. Not only is, is dirt in your well descriptive of what those local Philistines did to Isaac, it also kind of points to the, to the insult and the harm they intended. Kind of like dirt in your eye, the phrase that, that we might use today. Verse 14 tells us that the Philistines were, were jealous of Isaac's enormous and growing wealth. And despite a famine, which would have left most people struggling, here God was blessing Isaac with a hundredfold return on his crops. Right? Most maybe would have gotten 50 in a normal year. And this was a, a famine year. 60 would have been really good. A hundredfold was rare, even in a, in a good year for that that region. So, so here in the midst of the famine, Isaac was still getting what was rare in a good season. So you can imagine people start taking notice and jealousy begins. And from the profit Isaac made on this abundant harvest, the passage says Isaac was able to acquire many flocks of sheep and goats and herds of cattle and, and servants. And he was quickly becoming one of the, the wealthiest and most powerful men in the region. And again, this not only made the, the Philistines jealous, it made them fearful. And fearful people, if you don't know, can be dangerous. So in order to try and get rid of Isaac and his family, they, they fill in his wells, right? They jam dirt down in there and carcasses and anything they can get. They just jam up these wells so these wells can't be used. And with all the, those people that, that Isaac had and all the herds of animals to water, the wells were crucial to Isaac's success and his survival, especially during a drought, which is likely the cause of the, the famine. And so by filling in the wells, the, the Philistines were clearly telling Isaac he was no longer welcome in their land. And because Isaac's livelihood and the survival of his family depended on those wells, this was also an act of aggression. Now, well filling, um, it was commonplace in ancient times. This wasn't like something they just made up. This is what, this is what people did to their enemies, right, to, to slow down their enemies and to hurt their enemies. And so the Philistines now saw Isaac as a threat and an enemy. They had invited him in as a, as a welcome guest, but, but all of a sudden God's blessing upon him turned him in, in their eyes, to a threat and, and an enemy even. So how things turned. And so filling in Isaac's wells was a warning to Isaac that they meant business. If Isaac were to stay, things would likely progress, right? Things would likely get more and more serious. But before real violence takes place, the, the Philistine king, Abimelech, steps in and he orders Isaac to leave the country, explaining this. You, you have become too powerful for us, Isaac. 
likely Abimelech was more afraid for himself and his own people than he was for Isaac and his extensive household. The king had also known Isaac's father, Abraham, and had experienced firsthand how God had blessed and protected that family. And so Abimelech knew that the best thing, especially for his own people, was for Isaac to leave peacefully. So he relies on his authority as king and his long relationship with the family to to get Isaac to see reason and to, to leave before things got worse. So now Isaac has to make a decision. He's been insulted, he's been threatened, and is now being ordered to get out. He has every reason to stay and fight. I mean, moving such a large household through the, through the wilderness would be difficult and risky and dangerous. And leaving would mean giving up fertile ground in Gerar that was producing abundant crops and, and feeding his, his animals and his family. Leaving would mean starting over in many ways. Most importantly, God was blessing him abundantly in Gerar. Should he risk giving all of that up? But there would be a cost to staying as well. A war would likely ensue and and lives and resources would be lost. And even if Isaac did win, which there's a good chance, he would still be an outsider in a foreign country and and trouble would likely continue to to brew for as long as he remained there. So Isaac, after some deliberation, decides to heed the king's order and he leaves the country. But he doesn't go far. It says that he stops in the Gerar Valley, which is probably just outside of the established borders of, of Gerar, right, of this, this small developing nation. It's not this huge nation like maybe we think of in modern times. This, this country's probably this small, estab- or trying to get established uh, country and nation. And so um, Isaac just goes out to the valley, kind of outside of those borders, Maybe in the valley is probably more of that kind of unclaimed territory, more of the wilderness. And he thinks maybe there he can find some peace. But there too he runs into trouble, right? He's not far enough away. He he faces disputes and hostilities with the local herdsmen in the Gerar Valley. And twice Isaac's men dig wells and they they find fresh water again during this, this drought and this famine. And Twice the locals come and they claim it as their own. Each time Isaac must choose whether to to stay and fight or to move on and to trust God to keep providing. Isaac decides to to trust God and he he moves on to avoid trouble and to, to show grace to the locals. Eventually fresh water is found again far enough away this on a third time right where where no one comes this time to to fight over it there's no dispute over this third well that he digs god has provided again and again for isaac and at last isaac and his household can rest in peace at some point then isaac moves his family to beersheba and that says that they settle down more permanently there And as if to quell Isaac's worries, God appears to him on the very night that the household arrives in Beersheba, and God repeats his promise to Isaac to be be with him, to bless him, and to make his descendants into a great nation. Isaac drops everything. You know, have you ever imagined a long trip? And uh, you just arrive. You've got all your luggage and all your stuff, and you're trying to check into your hotel, or maybe you're moving across country and you're trying to move in. And, and it, that was Isaac, right? That was his family and his household. And in that moment, God appears to him. He drops everything. He builds an altar and worships the Lord right then and there. And within a few days, Isaac's men dig another well. And guess what? They find water. The Lord was indeed with him. 
So here's today's question for you. How do you react when you get dirt in your well? How do you respond when, when things don't go your way? We all wish that, that life went as we planned and how, how we'd prefer it to go, right? But sadly, life doesn't work that way. There are times when life just goes awry. Times we feel insulted or even threatened by others. We can't control the decisions and the actions of, of people. We can't control the world and, and all of life's circumstances. Sometimes stuff just happens. Stuff that takes our life in a totally different direction than we had planned or that we had wanted. No one could have expected the tragic events of 9-11 21 years ago and how that took so many lives and affected so many families and communities and, and workplaces, really our, our whole nation. And probably King Charles never expected his mother to live to 96 years old and to hold on to the crown for 70 years, the longest of any monarch, I think they said, in British history. She didn't give it up till her death just last week. And of course, Elizabeth herself had, had never expected to be queen, if you know the Elizabeth story, I know all those Netflix shows and all of that's popular. Everybody's probably watching those, uh, and now they really will, uh, about Queen Elizabeth and, and the, her history. But she'd never expected to be queen, especially at the age of 26 years old, when her father suddenly died of a heart attack, and he was only 57. And by the way, I don't know if you knew, Elizabeth's father had only become king because his older brother, King Edward VIII, had abdicated the throne after one year to go marry his American mistress. Life is full of twists and turns and, and unexpected events. Sometimes it's fortune, and sometimes it's tragedy. But come what may, the Bible reminds us that we can trust God no matter what. When life throws dirt in your well or dirt in your eye, you can complain, you can grumble, you can protest, and you can refuse to move on, or by God's grace, you can choose to forgive and make peace like Isaac. You can choose to move forward and to let go of the pain and the, the hurt of the past. Trusting that God will provide and, and somehow make things right. As it says in the Gospel of Luke, every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low, the crooked roads shall become straight, the rough places made smooth. And then all people will see God's salvation. Difficult and hurtful things are never easy to endure. But unfortunately, they are a part of this life. Trusting in God doesn't make all those things go away, but we do gain a hope that one day, somehow, God will straighten out all that went wrong. He will smooth out and heal all our rough and painful places. Our low spots will be raised up. What was empty will be filled. What was impossible before will be brought into reach. This is God's salvation. This is what it means to be saved. And God has made that possible through his son, Jesus Christ. What we are celebrating today, this kickoff Sunday, has nothing to do with ourselves, really. We're not celebrating what we have done or achieved or anything that, that we can do on our own this coming year. 
No, what we are celebrating is what God has done, what God has promised still to do. We are celebrating a God who who loves us so much that he came in the person of Jesus Christ to give us a hope in all things, to, to give us a future and a life together forever with him. We are celebrating that that God is with us and for us and that he is working all things together for our good. God is faithful and true and we can trust him no matter what. Life can often feel like a high wire act, scary and unnerving at every step. But as God told Isaac at Beersheba, do not be afraid, for I am with you, and I will bless you. No matter how scary and uncertain life gets, no matter how much dirt gets jammed down your well, you can trust God. You can count on God no matter what. So before you take another step on that high wire of life, put your hope and your trust in God through Jesus Christ. And if you haven't done that, you can do that today. Let's take a moment to pray. We'll just pause a moment first. Let God speak to you. you're hearing God speak to you this morning and you're wanting to put your trust in God through Jesus just invite him ask him to come into your life and into your heart admit that you need God admit that you can't do life on your own by your own strength by your own means Life is not working out the way you had hoped. You need God's love. You need God's forgiveness. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender and invite him in to your life. Surrender to God's will for your life. That he would put you on the path of of blessing and hope and protection and life. And commit, commit yourself to following Jesus wherever, wherever Jesus leads you, wherever Jesus points you. Commit your life, your family, your decisions, your money, your resources, your time to following Jesus. God, we thank you for always being with us. No matter what's going on in our lives, we know we can trust you through it all. You are always there to help us and to save us. Please give us the wisdom to know when to stand up for ourselves and when to let things go and move on so we can make peace. Help us to trust you each day, even when things don't go our way. We love you, and we put our faith in you through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you put your trust in Jesus today, will you let me or our online hosts know? Send us a note, uh, even right now if you want, or even better, come and talk to me in person. I would love to help you to take your next step in following Jesus and trusting God. Let's continue to worship. Would you stand? Our closing hymn is Blessed Assurance, number 369 in your hymnal, where the words will be on the screen.
Amen. Hey, this week I'm going to trust God with our church as we prepare to launch full swing into ministry this fall. Uh, and as we prepare for our yearly uh, church meeting, our annual church conference, we call it, or charge conference, um, I'm just going to trust God with our church, and um, God has us, and so uh, that's where I am this week. How about you? How will you respond to today's message in your life? How will you dare to trust God with what you're going through today? God bless you. Thank you for being here. Preschool teachers and board, thank you for being here. Thank each of you for uh, uh, your participation. Sarah, thank you for being here on the piano today. Always great to see you. Uh, and let me just remind you of our uh, food, our lunch in the fellowship hall right after. Hopefully you can stay. Um, and there's a couple things. There's, I think there's a welcome table to check in. I think we have some, some bags to give out to you as you kind of check in at the welcome table. There's a ministry table, which is straight through the lobby. It's a long table. It's got a bunch of uh, 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 interest forms, sign-up forms for the different committees. I think Craig Lee, our church council chair, will be standing there maybe with some of the committee chairs as well from the, from the council. So you can talk to Craig and other committee ministry leaders there. Uh, and also, we've been talking about our church's uh, new online directory and, and database. It's called Breeze. If you need a little help signing up for that, Donna, Donna Brackens, who's going to also be at our welcome table, said she would spend some time today with anybody who wants to uh, kind of get their profile set up on that, uh, just so you can uh, communicate with the church and, and uh, access your, uh, your, your needed things on there. So take a moment, if you haven't done that, and you'd like to do that today, you can get that done off your task list. Well, thank you again for being here. Let's continue to, to celebrate what God is doing, has done, and will continue to do. Uh, and we can trust God no matter what. God bless you. Have a great week.